What is going on guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. In this video, I'm going to cover the five corals that you should avoid. Have you ever gone to your local fish shop and just seen something that's so oddball that you've never seen ever before? It's spectacularly colored. You're not even sure what it is. The staff doesn't really know what it is, but you just can't resist it. It's just too interesting and you'll never see it again. This is the first coral that you should avoid. It's the coral that you've never researched. There's probably a good reason that you've never seen it before. Chances are it, it has a horrible survival record. Some oddball corals have some really oddball care requirements. Some of them are non-photosynthetic. Some of them, in addition to being non-photosynthetic, have very specialized feeding requirements. Things that advanced public aquariums and research institutions can't really keep alive either. Things you generally want to avoid. But the first step is actually knowing. You can save yourself a lot of grief in this hobby by front-loading on research and just studying up on pretty much anything that you're looking to add to your tank. So again, the number one coral to avoid is the coral never researched. Have you ever been excited about a coral and dug into the research? You did your due diligence, but then you go online to maybe like a forum, maybe you hit up your favorite reef-related Instagram, and everybody on the internet simply does not like this coral. They have all kinds of reasons why they don't like it. For example, it might grow too fast. Oh, it's a pest. Oh, that's just a beginner noob coral, whatever it may be. And on these same platforms, there's a completely different set of corals that are being promoted. And whenever anybody adds this, this fancy named coral to their tank, everybody in the peanut gallery rises in applause. This is the number two coral that you should avoid. Buy the coral that you like, not what other people online like. The core of this hobby really is your personal enjoyment of the tank. This is your tank. It's not Instagram's tank. At the end of the day, you have to be happy with the results. It's really easy to get caught up in putting together a tank that's going to get the most accolades, but again, you will be much happier long term having the tank that you want rather than the tank that somebody else wants for you. Have you ever researched a coral that's basically impossible to keep in captivity and your first thought is, hold my beer? You, sir, have discovered the number three on the list of corals that you should avoid is the coral that's thought to be impossible. The reason why I throw this onto the list is because I think that we tend to overestimate our abilities of husbandry. So I'll just use this uh, good driver analogy. Something like 64% of the people polled thought that they were an above average driver. So already, statistically, only 50% are gonna be correct. But there's 64% of the people think that they are above average. Those people also think that only 22% of everybody else are above average drivers. So there's this disconnect between how good of a driver they think themselves are and how bad other drivers are. Something similar takes place in the reef aquarium hobby. We overrate our abilities in this hobby and we tend to underrate the ability and experiences of others. So if there's a coral that is generally considered impossible, something like a Dendronephthia, for example, something that 99.99% of the hobby would not be able to keep alive. Chances are you're more similar to the 99.99% and not the 0.001%. Having said all that, I think it's also important not to dissuade people from trying new things to eventually develop a solution for these corals. At one time, Acropora was an impossible to keep coral. But we figured it out. My point in all this is to be cognizant of where you are in the hobby. It goes back to researching the corals. If there's a type of coral that's out there that people struggle with, the initial thought is, but I haven't tried it yet. And that's a bad way to go. 
unless you're trying something substantially different than what everybody else has tried up to this point, you're probably gonna get very similar results. Moving on. When you first started out in this hobby, did you ever have another hobbyist that was doing you a solid and gave you a bunch of pieces that were overgrowing his tank? I think a lot of people have had that experience. And this is the fourth coral to avoid. It's the just because it was free coral. Sometimes there was a reason for this. Sometimes this coral might have been too aggressive. Maybe this coral was just too much of a rampant grower. Maybe something like waving hand anthelia. Something that could really take over a small aquarium. Even large plating Montipora fit into that category. Perhaps the worst part about the just because it was free coral is that it's taking the space in your tank of something that you might have actually wanted. Now, if you both wanted it and it's free, great, no problem whatsoever. But a lot of times I end up with a lot of stuff that I never really wanted in the first place. And it's kind of a bummer because, you know, there's that opportunity cost that, you know, this could have been used for something I, I really, really, really liked rather than something that kind of conveniently fell into my lap. All right, the last coral that you should avoid, number five, is that investment piece coral. Now, what do I mean by that? In this hobby, for those that are kind of new to this, there's always gonna be a hot coral. Right now, I would say that it's probably really high-end acros as well as certain um, things like little oddities like bounce mushrooms. But there's always a hot coral. It's kind of a moving target. You'd never really know. Previously, it was chalices. Before that, it was zoanthids. Prior to zoanthids, it was acropora again. There's always, again, that very hot, popular piece. And I would say that the hype is worse now because of the prevalence of social media. In the past, you would see some, some insane priced thing. And it would just be that, it would just be some insane price thing. Nowadays, because of Instagram essentially, it's almost like the hype machine is just weaponized. So you have a lot more of it and it changes faster. The reason why I say that you should avoid that investment piece is the mentality that goes into buying it. You might not actually even like that investment piece, but you're thinking, I can buy this coral for X number of dollars, probably something high. And then I can propagate it, make my money back, and then from that point on, it's pure profit. In some cases, that might work out just great. The bigger problem, though, is that because of how fast these trends rotate, it's entirely possible for you to buy something and then have that coral be literally one-tenth the price by the time that you're looking to sell it. So again, unless you are in the trade, in the business of doing this type of activity, like you're actually a store, it's probably not gonna be the most fulfilling thing for a typical hobbyist. Having said that, there are plenty of individual hobbyists that they have an eye for these sort of things and it just works out for them and this pays for their entire hobby, probably a lot more than that even, but it comes with a tremendous risk. The other problem with this approach is that if you're looking to purchase corals only to resell them later, you really only get the benefit once you do sell it. That kind of eliminates the hobby aspect of this, right? Because if you're having an aquarium for your personal enjoyment and you're only gonna enjoy it once it's essentially empty, there's kind of this incongruity there. But it's something to consider. Obviously, I am a huge proponent of selling coral but there is a component that erodes on the enjoyment of the hobby. All right, guys, that does it for my list of five corals that you should avoid. What do you guys think? Is there something in your experience that you think that people should avoid? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Happy reefing.